Hello, my name is Jose Rosales, and for today's experiment, we're going to, going to be measure, measuring the molecular weights of an unknown by its freezing point depression. So first, we have to define uh, what a solution consists of. So a solution consists of two things. It consists of the solutes and a solvent. So an example of a solute and a solvent is basically salt and water. So sometimes solutions can have different properties. One of the two properties is, for example, freezing point depression. Another property is the boiling point elevation. Today we're going to be measuring the freezing point depression of a solute to solve for its molecular weights. And taking into account that uh, we're going to be freezing a, a particular type of compound, which is water, and uh, we have to note that the freezing temperature of water is when the solid and the liquid are basically are in equilibrium with each other. So coming from this, from the freezing point of water, uh, you're actually, you guys are actually gonna make a graph of how water is affected through by basically decreasing the temperature over a certain amount of time. So in this graph, it shows uh, the decrease in temperature over time, and you notice that there is a dip in the graph which basically corresponds to its supercooling effect. Supercooling effect is basically, uh, it's only in water, and it depicts that as you decrease the temperature of your solution, and you go beyond or under its freezing points, it basically still stays as a liquid. However, once it starts to crystallize or turn it to a solid, that's when it reaches its freezing points. Notice that the freezing point of water is exactly zero degrees Celsius as demonstrated on the chart. The next step is to basically first uh, solve for the freezing point of pressure of your solution. So the way to calculate for that is that first we have to find the freezing point of pure uh, solvent water. So the way we do that is that uh, we're going to be doing an experiment where we freeze water up into a point and then we're gonna measure it as uh, freezing points. And then to get the freezing point depression of the actual solution, we have to subtract that value minus the freezing point of the actual solution. So after we solve for the freezing point depression, we will basically plug it into another equation that basically um, creates or solves for the freezing point depression. So freezing point depression is equal to the molality times the freezing point of pressure constant of water times the Van Hoff factor or I solute. So in order for us to uh, solve for this, we have to define each value that is inside the equation. So to define what molality is, first we have to consider uh, what molality is. So basically, molality is a unit of measurement where it uh, includes the moles of the sol solute and the kilograms of the solvents. All you would have to do to solve for molality is divide the values of the moles of the solute by the kilograms of the solvents. For the freezing point depression constant of water, it is, it is a constant and uh, the value of it is 1.853 degrees Celsius per molal. So now next we have to define the Van Hoff factor, which is I. So the Van Hoff factor or I is basically equal to the number of ions uh, found in your solution. Say for example, you dissolve sodium chloride in water. So sodium chloride would dissolve in water and produce two ions. One ion of sodium and another ion of chloride. So basically the Van Hoff factor there would be equal to two. Next, if we were to put uh, another salt in there, say for example, calcium chloride, uh, that would produce three ions in solution because remember that calcium uh, chloride dissolves into calcium ions and two chloride ions. Calcium has a, having a positive two charge and chloride having a minus one charge. So therefore you would have to have two chloride ions to balance out the equation. So therefore you would, the Van Hoff factor of calcium chloride would be three. In this experiment, we're going to be measuring the uh, Van Hoff factor or the freezing point of pressure of a, of a non-ionizable uh, sol solute, which is, for example, glucose. Since glucose it dissolves in water but does not produce ions, the Van Hoff factor of that will be equal to one. And in the midst of all that, uh, once you solve for each one of the components of the equation, uh, you'd have to rearrange the equation 
to basically solve for molality first. Because to measure or to figure out or to determine the molecular weight of an unknown compound, you will first have to uh, figure out how many moles are in solution and then uh, figure out how many grams of the solvent that you have. So basically we go back to defining what molality is. Remember that molality is the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. So if we rearrange the equation, we can basically um, define moles of the solute as to be equal to the molality times the kilograms of the solvent. Once we figure out uh, the moles of the solute, we can then plug it into the molecular weight equation. So before we start the experiment, make sure to wear your safety equipment at all times. For example, uh, safety gloves, a lab coat, uh, safety glasses, and remember to always wear uh, closed toe shoes and cover up your ankles, wear long pants. And for people who have long hair, please remember to tie your hair back. So these are the materials that we're gonna use for today's experiment. We're gonna be using the Microlab hardware. We're also gonna be using the thermistor to measure the temperature. And we're gonna be using the styrofoam cup to conceal the temperature inside uh, with the ice and water. We're also gonna be using these propylene tubes to measure the temperature of the water inside the test tube to see the change in temperature. We're also gonna be using the unknown. Uh, make sure you have it always capped before you use it. We're also gonna be using the salt to keep the freezing points of the solution below zero so we can measure it afterwards to create the super cooling graph. So to start the experiment, uh, first we have to get a batch of ice with water. So after we get the batch of ice with water, we're going to dump it into the styrofoam cup. After adding the ice to the styrofoam cup, we're going to be adding salt. And remember the salt is to keep the freezing points of water or to reach the freezing points of water and below it as well. So make sure to mix the solution very well. So once you've done your uh, salt uh, and ice water solution, you would have to uh, first fill a test tube uh, up to 12 milliliters of water and that's to put inside your styrofoam cup. Because after that, we're going to be measuring the temperature change of the water inside the tube and how it, uh, it drops according to how much ice and uh, water with the salt was in there. So basically, um, we're gonna be doing that. And then afterwards, uh, to basically or get the molecular weight of your known, First, you have to measure how much of your known you placed inside your uh, test tube. So before, beforehand, um, you have to get a weighing scale. To get the weighing scale, you basically have to tear the weighing scale with the test tube inside. And then afterwards, you would have to place about 0.5 grams or 500 milligrams on known solid. After that you place it inside your test tube and then you measure approximately 500 milligrams and now you're ready for the next step of the experiment. So this part of the experiment is going to consist of setting up your microlab software system and as well as measuring the actual experiment itself. So first off in the computer you have to open up the Microlab uh, icon. After, up you, after you open up the Microlab icon, you have to click on Microlab Experiment. So after that, uh, this graph shows uh, two data sources. So basically, you have to add two sensors in order to depict the transition of lowering the temperature over time. Basically, first, you have to uh, input your thermistor in the microlab components. So basically, you can choose any port, but in my preference, put it in port A, because with the thermistor, you're going to be measuring the change in temperature inside the little test tube there. So, 
after you placed your thermistor in the uh, uh, apparatus, you would have to add that sensor to the graph. So you click on uh, add sensor on the uh, left hand side, and then uh, this window pops up. So first you have to choose your sensor. So uh, remember that we're measuring temperature, so all you're going to click on is the thermistor temperature. And then you're going to choose an input. Since I put it in slot A, I would select uh, A, and that uh, records or uh, records the value of the temperature in that slot. And then you're going to click on uh, Use Factory Calibration because uh, these machines are already come calibrated. So once we already put in the thermistor sensor or the temperature sensor, the next thing we have to add is the time sensor. So you click on add sensor one more time. And then this time you're going to use a different sensor, the time sensor. And then uh, it shows these three little slots. You don't have to input anything there. All you, all you would have to do is just click on one of them. I perfectly uh, chose one. And then you're going to set timer options. So here you can uh, do an automatic operation or program control uh, with the keyboard, but we're just going to use the automatic operation. And then the units for the timer is going to be set in seconds. So then you click on finish, and now you have uh, your temperature sensor as well as your time sensor. So after that, after you, after you added the sensors, you would have to click and drag to the chart so they can display the values or record the values as time goes on. So this is the chart that's going to be demonstrating the change of temperature over time. And as well, you can click and drag the sensors down to the lower, uh, lower left hand side of the screen so you can record the numerical values of each one of them over time. Now we have to put in the thermistor inside the test tube. So after you place the thermistor inside the test tube, you would quickly press on start so that it can start recording the values over time. So notice that the uh, graph is actually decreasing over time but you can actually shake the swirl, the ice water solution. So that it can go down even further. So as you can see, throughout time, uh, it's recording the values of the temperature over a certain amount of time. So after you place the probe inside the test tube and started to measure the temperature decrease over time, you're basically going to get a graph like this shown here. So notice that there is in fact a dip in the graph, which basically demonstrates the super cooling effect of water. And then it starts to rise once it crystallizes in solution. So that's when you can determine that the freezing point is in fact zero degrees Celsius because if you go across the plateau, you can see the fact that it is zero degrees Celsius, which is the freezing point of water. So for the next step of the experiment, you're going to do the same procedure as we did with the pure solvents, now with the solute that you introduce into this test tube. So inside this test tube, I added about 12 milliliters of water, and I shook it to fully dissolve so that we can go on and measure the same way as we did with the pure solvents with this, this uh, unknown. So once you have gathered all the data from your experiments by gathering the data from the freezing points of water as well as the freezing points of your unknown, you're going to subtract the values to figure out the freezing point depression of your compound. Once you have your freezing point depression, you can plug it into the formula we saw earlier and solve for the molality of uh, the unknown solutes. Once you have your molality, you're going to solve for moles. And then from there, you're going to divide the mass that you put in the, in the flask, in the tube, and then uh, divide that through the moles that you get from the molality of your equation. And that concludes this experiment. Thank you.